top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. It's Ann Perry, numerologist, and I am so excited to be inviting my guest today, professional astrologer, Holly Poole. Hey, Holly. Hi there, Ann. What's going on today? Beautiful day out there today. So I'm, I'm happy to be talking about the fire today. Yes, no kidding, right? So it's, uh, it's sure showing, showing up in the sun today for sure. Um, I'm really happy that we were able to get this together because we've been talking about doing this for a while. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Holly and I were in business together for several years with a company called Healing in Motion. For 11 years, actually. It was 11. I know. It was 11 years, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, we, uh, we worked together quite closely for about 11 years, and um, we got to know each other. And uh, she developed her practice in astrology, and I developed mine in numerology. And here we are together again. So many of you have seen us together, and it's always a bit of a hoot. <laughs> so I hope that you'll stay tuned. <laughs> Um, so today we're going to be talking about something very special and dear to my heart. You know, I do have a passion for the master number 11, um, energy, uh, cause it is a bit, a bit of a challenge, right? It's a bit of a, of a difficult time, um, for them, but it doesn't have to be. So my, uh, intention and that of Holly's is to help to empower you with information and inspire you in some way that we can maybe illuminate your path somewhat to help you to find, um, ways to get through the 11 journey a little bit more easily. So today we're going to be talking about how does the element of fire affect the master number 11 energy? And I thought, who better to talk about that than Holly Poole? So I'm going to turn it over to you. Excellent. And thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm so happy to be able to do this with you, Anne. Um, as we know, as you said earlier, we've done so much of this together and it's mm -hmm. always so much fun. It is too. And I guess, you know, I want to start, and I'm sure you've talked to your uh, people all along, that we do choose our birth date. Yes, you absolutely. You to come forward as an 11. God or the universe, whatever your personal belief may be, has allowed you to do that. Right. And as an astrologer, I also believe that, you know, because choosing that birth date, we actually do choose to come forward as an Aries or a Leo or, or a Sag. We chose um, an Aries? <laughs> <laughs> well, Anne is an Aries, so we're going to be talking about Anne. That's hysterical all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, I just want to talk about the element of fire. And uh, you don't have to be a fire sign. Now, the fire signs are people who are Aries or Leo or Sagittarians. You guys were born with the sun sign in, an, in a fire element. But there's other people who are also born with tons of fire in their chart. And the amount of fire in your, par in your chart determines how passionate you are. Just think about the flame of fire. It crackles and it burns and it, it moves its way along and it flows and it is passionate. So often one of the things with our fire signs, for instance, they need to get into their passion. And I have to admit, I don't know a whole lot about 11s, but, and I assume that sometimes 11s are afraid of their passion. Is that Oh, absolutely. When you're looking at the 11, we're looking at two number ones to the left of the slash. Mm -hmm. um, and the one is a masculine energy. So they struggle with having more masculine energy than they, but, uh, than they do the feminine energy, which is the number two. Okay. But because it sits on the left of the slash, it's their challenge is to step into that masculine, more assertive, more aggressive, more passionate um, energy. And I just want to take a moment to, to say that this video that we're creating here relates to the number 11. So this means that you could be a master number 11 in your life path, your expression number, your heart's desire number, even your birthday number. All of this information will pertain to you. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, but that makes, that's a very good point. So let's start with the sign of Aries. Okay. Uh, Miss Anne. Uh, we'll start with the sign of Aries, and the birth dates for Aries take us from the 21st of March to the 20th of April. Now, they're the first sign in the zodiac, so it's important for 11s to realize you guys have to be like the Pied Piper. You have come to be the leader. We call you a cardinal sign, 
the leaders, the things that work your passion. Now, if I'm correct, the 11 is double creativity. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. That's right. And so where does your creativity lie? Mm -hmm. That's important for an Aries. And I know when Anne and I worked together, we worked a lot together on that, didn't we, Anne? Because okay. I know Anne wanted so much to be this fabulous numerologist, but it's learning about stepping into the power and the path of that. Well, the other side of it was I was always the one that would come up with the idea and I'd want to forge forward, but you were the ones, you, you have ones in your chart where I don't. So you had the vision and I didn't. Right. Right. I had the impulse to go and yeah. do it, but you had the ones. And you also had all of the creative ability. Mm -hmm. Right. You would put together retreats and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And would be the one who would be creating the logos. Remember the time we were trying to create logos? Oh my heavens. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm trying I'm trying to actually erase that. But, <laughs> that. but the Aries have yeah. to learn. You guys have come to be the leader. You've yeah. got to step up. To that plate yeah. and when I say nobody cares what your passion is mm -hmm. I don't mean that mildly because everybody Aries not all Aries are going to be passionate we'll just say just about numerology or passionate about astrology or passionate about you may be passionate about painting you may be passionate about creation of some kind I will tell you Aries um, people are amazing as marketers Mm -hmm. Like they are the four runners and you have to give yourself permission to run after the next new thing. That's, that's the other thing with an Aries is that they can't be held back mm -hmm. in order to finish off everything here. Because if there's a new idea that's just come along, Oh, we got to jump on that. Yeah. Right? Because that's important. Isn't that right? Anne? Yeah, I agree. And, and it's not just permission. I think it's courage. Okay. Right? I think it's, it has a lot to do with courage. Because when you look at the 11, as it relates to the Aries, as I'm starting mm -hmm. to piece it all together here, um, the, the 11 has a need to step into something. They don't know what necessarily it is, but when they do step into it, I'm case in point, when they do step into it, they just bloom, right? Um, because they find their purpose. They find their passion. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that hangs them up is that, an 11, regardless of whether you're a 47, 11, 29, 11, 30, it doesn't matter, right? If, you're, if you, if the end result is that you're an 11, the 11 is, in fact, a 2. The 2 is one of partnership. Right. So we have somebody who is afraid of failure, is afraid of rejection, afraid of stepping into this unique new thing that's coming up, because what happens if it goes bad? I don't want to be alone, because I'm one of two. Right? Yeah. So I need partnerships. So the risk is very scary for somebody who's an 11, also in Aries. But they have to <laughs> somehow or other, uh, uh, a visionary help with that can be the, the vision of like the Pied Piper, because that's what they've come to be. Mm -hmm. They have come to be that person that is out at the front of the pack. That's what an Aries. And I really think that if an Aries doesn't allow themselves to do that they're not really a very happy Aries you, you know? know and we got I have to share this because for years you know I worked the the, the normal corporate job right when you and I had yeah. in motion we, we had, had many discussions this. over that oh yeah yeah and I'll share it openly here you know Holly always said to me and you've got one foot in the corporate door you've got one foot in the healing arts being my numerology and my Reiki and all the things that I was mm -hmm. doing she said unless you put two feet in one door you can't walk through either one of them Mm -hmm. Right. And that is, you know, no truer words were ever said, but I didn't have the courage. I didn't have what I deemed what I needed was support, but really it was, I wasn't ready to support myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe in myself enough to, to get the job done. So now, do you think that comes like, do you think the courage actually comes with stepping into personal years when people get to their personal years? Do you think it's, mm -hmm. do you think it comes via that? Um, Yes, in part. I, I definitely, absolutely. I mean, the personal years uh, from one to nine hold a huge distinction. Mm -hmm. One being new beginnings, nine being endings, and right. all the stuff in between, right? Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. But I think that personal experiences too, I know having lost my mom, um, for whatever reason, and it's too, too long to get into here, but having lost my mom, um, I was able to step into my authentic self because of, a, of an experience I had with her from spirit. 
So, you know, there's different ways. And remember the, the 11 energy, which I am not. My first name is an 11, but that's really as far as I vibrate <laughs> as an 11. I don't know why I was called to, to, uh, to uh, mentor to these guys. But anyway, I am. And I get it for some reason. But I do believe it's related to your connection to spirit and um, a willingness to surrender to that. I think that was the big thing for me is I just had to go. I was driving the bus, right? Mm -hmm. and I was driving the bus and all these places. Okay, I can go here or I can go here and I can throw that against the wall. Maybe that'll stick. I can throw this crap against the wall. Maybe that'll stick and trying all these different things. But in the end, at the end of the day, I always knew I was meant to be the numerologist and I knew I was good at it, but I was, I was driving my bus and I had all the control because that's what Aries do. Right. So I think for it's all for, about me, right? It that's, is. That's Absolutely. No question. That. Absolutely. It is. It is right. <laughs> and it, need, it, it needs to be. I mean, when I teach astrology, the first words that the key words that go to the sign of Aries is I am. Right. But you know what? If I signed up, and I mean I as in collectively everybody, if we sign up um, with a life purpose in mind, okay, we, we choose our life path number, we choose our vibration of our name so right. that our whole soul's contract is all written out for us and determined by us before we get here. Mm -hmm. So if I believe that, then the best thing I could have done for myself, and I eventually did, was just surrender. Yes. Give it up, sister. Just surrender to it, right? And yeah. the interesting thing is that, you know, with the astrological chart, over this last seven years, it's been seven years, yeah. that the sign of Uranus, the planet of unexpected events, <laughs> have <laughs> actually <laughs> hit off every one of those 30 degrees in the sign of Aries. Wow. So I 100% guarantee our, our listenership out there yeah. that you have been ignited, whether you realize it or not. Then when we go to people who are in their early 40s, I'm presently reading a book called Kundalini and the Astrological Spirit, and it talks mm -hmm. about when we are 38 to 42 years of age. So if you're an 11 in there, yeah. you are massively being ignited. Was you're that 38 to what? 38 to 42 okay. age, age group that is, we're mm -hmm. talking about here. Mm -hmm. You are massively being ignited. Right. And if you are 50 or 51, you're Chiron, which is that feeling of that wounded warrior. I'm not smart enough, tall enough, cute enough, fat enough, skinny enough, oh. whatever. Fill it yeah. in. That's a huge point to, to draw on there for a second. Um, that whole uh, Chiron event. Return, and, yeah. And that happens to us. Um, really affects the 11s. Because these guys are poster children for I'm not good enough, right? Yeah. They yeah. compare themselves to their previous lifetimes, even though they're not consciously aware that they're doing it. They compare themselves to everybody else. And here's the thing, which draws into the Aries as well. The double 11 energy is a double one. It doesn't say... I'm going to come and uh, duplicate what somebody else did. I'm going to come and copy my neighbor. I'm going to copy that artist over there. I'm going to copy that writer. It doesn't say that. It says, I will invent something. I will create something. I will be the initiator, right, which is the Aries. I am. Yeah. I am, right? So um, related to the 11s, the return of Chiron, I have to um, expect would be a very, very difficult time. And when I work with clients, we, whether you're 11th or whatever, astrologically, we automatically look into that Chiron because Chiron is the wounded warrior. Yeah. However, and we don't have time today to get into the whole mythological side to Chiron. But we'll do it on another video. But we can. Yes, we certainly <laughs> can. Yes, we do. Uh, but Chiron is also the massive teacher. Yeah. So if we can actually take that Chiron into that power, how powerful can yeah. that Aries energy be? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And let's keep an eye on that, looking at the, at the age range of my clients, because that's, that's an interesting observation. Well, in astrology, and we probably are running out a bit of time here for the whole Aries talk, but... Uh, we always have time for Aries, come on. <laughs> Yes, that's right. The rest of you, the Leo side, forget it's about, about us. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but um, what happens in astrology, we believe that, so at the moment of your birth, say Chiron's here in your chart, you know, and it continues on moving around. As, and when we get to 50-51, it comes back to line up. We've got a 
Chiron return. And everybody experiences that. Right. In astrology, we believe that that is one full revolution of the soul. The soul has hit up every single lesson mm -hmm. it's ever written in your chart. And I think this is why people talk about, I love my 50s. Aren't the 50s great, Anne? <laughs> Let's start it at 50. Love the 50s. <laughs> Yeah. So the belief is, now, of course, Chiron continues on around for the next 50 years, right? But because some of those lessons we already got in our first 50 years, yeah. our next 50 years is often so much easier. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, life got better and better at 50 and got real good at 54. <laughs> so we, we look at yeah. the Chiron return as one of that Kundalini shift change energy. Mm -hmm. Cool. The, the cycles like that can be amazing, right? So what can, what can we suggest for our Aries friends who are 11s? What, what are some tips and tricks that we can offer them to help them to well, make it a bit easier? I think one of the big things is, first of all, discover your passion. Yes, absolutely. Right? And what I usually do with clients, because lots of times people are afraid of their passion. Mm -hmm. They're afraid, oh my goodness, if I come up with my passion, now I have to do something about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As an Aries, you what are, happens if I fail? You do have to do something about it. Yes. Yeah. Right? And the other, one of the things that they can do to help themselves with that is to look a little bit more closely at their heart's desire number or their soul urge number. That's yeah. be a very... Um, people don't seem to observe that as closely as they should. And you know, when we look at the four core numbers in a numerology chart, the first one is the life path number, which is where your lessons lie. Mm -hmm. And that is what you'll feel the most, right? That's always in your face. Second to that would be the expression number where your talents are hidden. Uh, and that's second in terms of intensity that you feel. Third to that would be the heart's desire number, um, which is where your passion lies. But it's third in intensity, so it gets overlooked, right? Yeah. So sometimes we have to really look at that and and um, and see what is it that makes us happy and, and embrace it. And it's the same with the astrological chart. Your purpose is fully aligned there. And don't you find like it's not? <laughs> I'm going to shoot myself in the foot when I say this. But oh no! Here we go. <laughs> I made research, and I was told that the body part associated with the Aries is the head. That's right. We're head cases, right? It's the head, uh, the brain, uh, the face. Yeah. You know, lots of Aries people deal with a lot of sinus issues. Mm -hmm. They deal with a lot of tension headaches. Yeah. Um, um, and, you know, moving into your Reiki side, mm -hmm. uh, I bet you, you probably found a lot of Aries uh, was not very grounded. They didn't have the ability to bring the energy down to their feet. Right? Yeah, that's exactly, that was my next note that I had to bring up is, is, is exactly that, um, that the Aries are kind of head cases. <laughs> I'll take one for the team. Um, and uh, 11s too are not grounded. There's, they, they have this wonderful ability to be able to grasp divine guidance. Okay, they have this mm -hmm. light, thin little veil that exists between them and the other side, right? And their right. ability to communicate with spirit is wonderful. Mm -hmm. As a child, they tend to kind of shut that down a little bit. It's a whole other video, but it's, they tend to shut it down. So it's this fear of being rejected. It's this fear of, of oh, I'm different. Mm, better shut that down kind of thing, right? So um, to be able to make use of all this divine guidance that they are privy to, um, they, they need, need to, to connect around. to fire. They, they also need to connect to fire, right? Right. Connect to the fire and connect to the ground, don't you think? Because oh, yes. Yeah, for sure. I always but, say it's like the ideas are coming down like lightning bolts, but a lightning bolt isn't a lightning bolt till it touches the ground. Mm -hmm. And right? you have to, what I often suggest to people is to actually light a candle and stare mm -hmm. into it. Light a little, uh, have a little timer here, you know, yeah. put it on for 10 seconds and stare into that flame. Then you want to reset and close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Can you still see that flame? Right. Because from a procrastination side, we need to get the flame inside of us. Because the Aries is good at starting stuff, but they get bored very easily. So sometimes finishing it is, a, is a problematic. And sometimes it's about the fact of starting it and realizing maybe that ain't my passion. Right. And oh. so sometimes it is about the How much money did I spend finding that out? <laughs> um, maybe it is about the giving oneself permission uh -huh. to just 
take it. And let's just use the thought of aromatherapy, for instance. Maybe they feel they have an interest in aromatherapy. I always say to them, then just take a weekend course. Don't sign up for the whole entire thing. Just try it and see what you like it. You will know whether it rings your bell or not. Right. Um, I was going to say something else about the 11th too. It's their groundedness. Uh, oh, diet. Um, Doreen Virtue has a really good book, and her, the name of the book escapes me. You probably have it um, behind here. Um, but it's related to diet for light workers. So we have to remember that the 11s are light workers. Mm-hmm. So we need a lot more um, live vibration foods, mm-hmm. right? So that would include fruits and vegetables and things that are not cooked. So live enzymes right. um, are yeah. really important because that keeps the energy flowing and it doesn't get all jammed up and jarred and and, and such. So it's interesting. You brought up their light workers. One of the things I have found in my practice is I very seldom see 11s Mm -hmm. unless somebody gives them a gift certificate Mm -hmm. or they come with someone or somebody pulls them along with them. They very seldom. And so I don't know our 11s, afraid of realizing that they are late workers because that's what I often get. No, they're just afraid of you. And this is totally off topic, but isn't that a funny observation? Because we've always said that the people who are attracted to you are not attracted to me. And yes. Vice versa, right? So Absolutely. Again, isn't that yeah. Funny? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so when people do come to me as 11s, often they are about then ready to step into the spirituality mm-hmm. world because, you know, I'm going to tell it like it is, right? <laughs> Just yeah. lay yeah. it on the line. Like I do, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lay it on the line bit. So yeah. usually when an 11 comes, <laughs> I'm usually quite interested because I'm thinking, okay, they must now be ready to go, okay, well, I tried this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. I must be ready to just about step into the light worker world. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's move on to talk about the Leos. <laughs> the Leo energy is a very different energy than the Aries. Uh, and so the birth date for Leos is the 24th of July to the 23rd of August. Mm-hmm. Leos are all about the love. Leos crave love Mm -hmm. like crazy and leos have to be told that they are loved that's that's a big thing now for an 11 um i would think part of the difficulty of being the leo there is that leos fear ridicule oh yeah they fear judgment they fear rejection um i was raised finally a leo so i get this Mm -hmm. um but in terms of the needing to be told they're loved and whatnot, it's interesting because the karmic lesson of a two, which somewhat relates back to the 11 two energy, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. relates to the 11s learning to um, give and receive unconditionally mm-hmm. without need for a pat in the back. Right. Right? Yeah. So there is a struggle on both sides then, isn't there? There is. There is. And... And there is no astrological sign any more creative than a Leo. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things with Leos is they see color very different than a lot of other people. I have a good friend who's a Leo and we can look out the window. Of course, me being an Aquarian and the non-attention to detail as much with colors, I can look out and go, oh, you know, it's green out there. And yet the Leo is going to look out and go, oh, there's 15 shades of green (laughs) out there. Right. Yeah. So um, the 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 Leos too, they're very theatrical, aren't they? Yes. They're very yeah. they 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 can create drama where there's no drama. When a Leo yeah. walks into a room, you know a Leo has right? walked yeah, yeah. into a room. They have big bold energy, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're probably going to show up with maybe a purple top and orange pants and the louder the better. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and it's all about their hair. Leos are all about their hair. Donald really? Trump's ascendant is Leo. Okay. So oh, the lion, right? Isn't that related to the mane of the lion? It's right. all about the mane. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what you will find is lots of Leo people often have, you know, large amounts of beautiful, beautiful hair. Wow. I didn't know that. Now, they're a fixed fire sign. What does that mean? uh, Well, we said, remember, the Aries is the cardinal, so they're the leaders. The fixed fire sign can sometimes be very fixed in opinion, Mm -hmm. fixed in mindset, fixed in place. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to really push that, that Leo 11 out of the comfort spot. Because again, we've got the judgment, need to be loved. They also work on guilt, you know, in the fact of if, if you, uh, Amen. Yeah, if you actually um, are an Leo, uh, or sorry, yes, are a Leo, and you're a child, you can work on the guilt of that individual, or it can come the other way around. They also have very um, underlying ways of pushing in guilt. Uh, isn't that interesting? One of the notes that I had made when I was making notes for our discussion was um, they can manipulate with drama. Yes. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's one of the things that I, I started thinking about the correlation to the 11. The 11s do not like drama. They don't like the spot. Okay. okay. They like to be in the background. They don't mind being leaders, but they want to push from behind. And they're quite happy to kind of push you ahead and let you shine. And they're, they're good to know that they helped in that process, but they don't want the limelight. Whereas what I understand is that the Leos really do like the limelight. And certainly growing up with a Leo, <laughs> my mother wanted the limelight for sure. Yeah. But the, but the positive side of this is that, again, if I'm correct, the, the Leos are determined and they're ambitious. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they can be very demanding, uh, very assertive, you know, and they're very artistic. They're naturally artistic and creative. Naturally. Right? Naturally creative, yeah. Which I can see that as being really quite a good support to somebody who's chosen to incarnate as an 11. Yeah. Right? And I find the creativity for them is mainly around color. You know okay. what I mean? Where we talked about the Aries in the marketing or, or something of that mm-hmm. nature. But generally, when it has to come down to a Leo, there has to be color involved. So it can be home decoration. It can be painting. You know, your mom with regards to the jewelry making. Yeah. Um, but color for a Leo has to be involved somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I used to say my mother would paint a garden. Yes. She would plant her garden. It was always, you know, in time with the seat, like you, you know, it was always in time with the seasons and the colors had to be just so and, and all that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah. uh, but she definitely felt that for sure. But as uh, I said, they really do fear ridicule. So it often does keep them back mm-hmm. from doing some of the things. Right. Life, right. Which is really a shame because they also often you find with Leos can have a beautiful musical side to them. Often Leos can have tons of music ability. Mm-hmm. So they, they often can sing, they often can play music. And lots of times you find Leos as what we call backstage singers because mm-hmm. they sing in their home or somewhere of that nature. But they're very afraid of singing often out in public because again that fear of the ridicule that i hit Mm -hmm. that note exact right right and the leo too um is somebody who doesn't like to be overshadowed Mm -hmm. now i found that interesting as i was looking this up the reference points for this because i was thinking about the 11 that they don't want the limelight either right right? but there's something about 11s that attract people to them you know the, the 11 prefers quiet time they prefer they're they're one of two people right so they like to have one-on-one relationships they're not really into the whole group dynamic whereas the the leo likes the party right they like the people around they like the the flamboyancy of it they love to to be the the star of the show all that kind of stuff and the 11 really doesn't so i think that that helps this to a certain degree to push the 11 into something that maybe they wouldn't normally Mm -hmm. comfortable going into but they Um, also as i said leo's crave love Yes. And you never can, yeah. and you never can love them enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and 11s need to be told they're loved. Mm-hmm. They physically need to hear it 
out of the mouth. It's no good to just sort of give them an arm around or, you know, and you will find that underneath they need people to say, you did good, or you have worked hard at that. And yeah. you really, you know, it's sometimes a little bit difficult from the other side, mm -hmm. um, having to do that. Right. So I, when I, when I work with a Leo, I try to get them to see the person who really needs to pat you on the back the most is you, is you. right? You, yeah. you have to do that for yeah. you. They have to validate themselves. It doesn't matter if I think that doesn't look good or it does look good or whatever it may be. Yeah. My opinion is my opinion and it shouldn't really mm -hmm. matter. Your opinion is what is important to you. And you know, one of the big lessons I think, and I'm, and I'm relating back to, to the years with my mom who really struggled with, with this very subject of, of accepting love and giving love and needing approval. My gosh, she needed yes. a lot of approval. And yet she was such a brilliant artist, brilliant yes. in so many ways, yet she really needed approval. Um, and she wouldn't, even, even when she was pricing her work, you know, she was uh, one of the top silversmiths in Canada. And even when she was pricing her work, I mean, it barely covered the expense of materials. Like, and it was such a reflection of how poorly she thought of herself. Right. Just how she didn't buy into it. She was waiting for someone else to go, oh my God, that's amazing. Yes, I'll pay that, you know, Yes. kind of thing. So Leos and 11s, all of us, uh, need to be very careful that we teach people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Set of boundaries. Boundaries are huge. And if, if I think about that, that, um, the Leo I grew up with, I think she was almost like a pot with holes in it that I could pour as much love into it as I wanted to. And all of us around it, we can keep pouring, but it all just, it just all fell out, right? Because she wasn't able to hold on to it for herself, right? So in the end, what the Leo will do uh, inadvertently is basically tell the people around them that they're not good enough. And that's very difficult as an 11 because they're already believing that they're not good enough. Right. Right? right. Yeah. Um, so. it, it, they'll set up a mirror image. Often how people treat us is the mirror image that rolls back right. forward, right? Yeah, exactly. But Leo is all about family, too. Mm -hmm. And having the love of their children mm -hmm. is a topmost need mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And even the acceptance of their children, you know, they don't want to hear, for instance, you were a bad mom or as yeah. a mom, you could have done this differently mm -hmm. or as a dad, you could have done this. And I guess we're talking all about women. There's, there's 11 Leos too. Yeah. Right? Uh, and you know, when people are born and their moon is in the sign of Leo, um, they so need to be, need it yeah yeah it's true it's very very true i remember my mom we used to say that she would attract strays she would she would bring in all the strays right strays were, could be animals but mostly it was people they're always people and i think back on it now they were probably 11s they were yeah. always people that didn't quite fit in you know they were a little artsy or they're a little different or they they were a little shy or whatever and my mom would always bring them close i said they were to other leos though Oh, no, no. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> you want to know that for sure. No, she couldn't handle that competition <laughs> for the limelight. No. no way. But she liked the underdog. Um, and, and liked to But the underdog would have accepted her then. Yes, exactly. That's it, right? And they it would have, would have thought... put her up on a bit of a pedestal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because they right. would have been then striving to try and get up to her pedestal. And it's not about her being better but it is an inner side that I've got to be good enough if yes. these people are striving to get up to me. And she never felt good enough within her own family. Therefore she attracted all kinds of other people. To yes. Her, right. So, um, and, and again, it comes back to not wanting to lose the limelight. I think the, if I understand correctly, the Leos don't like to lose that limelight. And we attract people in exactly as we put out there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so if we put out there the fact of, well, my, I'm not good enough, you know, yeah. my hair is not enough or my earrings or whatever it might be. Right. And you're going to attract someone into you to say, couldn't you do something with that hair? <laughs> you know, like we, we do that, right? <laughs> that was, that was my, you knew that. That was my mother's biggest comment towards me. What the hell are you doing with your hair? <laughs> what is wrong with your hair? <laughs> 
<laughs> Every single time. I'd see her once a year, and the first comment was, hey, how are you? I hate your hair. <laughs> funny anyway but no I did not know that with your mom actually <laughs> did you not? that's too fun yeah so with regards to the Leo's 11s um, you know look to that creative measure and I and I say to people you know sometimes we need a little bit of a boot in the behind to get ourselves going mm -hmm. so if that's the case go to a dollar store pick up a coloring book and a pack of crayons and let yourself play that's the other thing with the Leo's they never grow up yeah. I love about Leo's. The imagination's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? The imagination leads to the creativity, which leads to actually creating something, right? So maybe uh, the advice to the, the Leo's who are 11s is just allow yourself to play. To down. Play. So the 11s are, are, are old souls. So they come in with a vibration that is an old soul vibration. So therefore, they're putting out the old soul vibration. They are attracting... Um, they're attracting to them, not attracting to them, what I want to say, their parents, let's just say, and their immediate family treats them differently. I would say, you know, the 11 comes out of the womb knowing how to change their own diapers because they're the old souls. They have this vibration. People know they're mature, you know, and that, oh, you know, Johnny, you knew better than that. Come on now. You're the mature one here in the group, right? You're the smart one. You're the responsible one, whatever. They treat them way more maturely than what they really are. But so, isn't that why they would choose those parents? To get oh, that lesson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they also need to learn to reclaim their childhood, mm -hmm. right? To, yes. be able to reclaim yes. the, the ability to play, right? Yes. It's without that playtime, without that a room for imagination. And I'm not talking about just sitting back, because I know 11s can take, kind of sit for hours and just kind of just, you know, um, gaze at the stars and gaze at the sky. You know, I'm, I'm talking about really productively creating something through your imagination and turning it into something. And, and like the adult coloring books, for example, you yeah. know, like you say, it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Make an art class. Uh, yeah. you know. Go to a paint night thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, if you're worried about, am I going to be good enough? You're not going to be any different than anybody else sitting there. Most right. people who go to paint nights have never picked up a paintbrush and, in their life. And the whole thing is with, with, you know, the, the 11s, they strive for perfection, right? They don't want to be judged for anything less. But it's always subject to the eyes of the beholder, right? I mean, you might paint something, and I could say, "Oh my God, Holly, that's amazing! I love what you did here." And I you're like, "That ad, but anyway, I know that, right?" <laughs> I'm reaching here, <laughs> I'm reaching here. Um, but you know, it's, not always, my forte. it's always subject to 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 a person's opinion, right? So, anyway, um, okay. So, with regards to the Leos, then we know that uh, they need to reach out for their creativity um, and play. And play, yep. They're and amazing at writing children's books as well. Amazing. Oh, yeah. My mom wrote a couple of books, actually. Um, children's stories, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that the child allows to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I told myself a little joke inside my head. <laughs> anyway. And obviously, she's not sharing it with the rest of us. I know. I'm not. <laughs> That might be a good thing, people. Team players. That's what I want to say. So the the um, what the eleven is very good at is being a team player. They're very good working one on one with people. They're very good at building bridges. They're very build, good at build um, creating uh, peace and harmony and divergent forces. You know, getting they can they can go into a room and go, okay, so I need a team to take care of this project. Okay, Joe and Mary, you guys are good. Boom. Okay. Sue and Rosalind, eh, not so much. Okay, so Sue, you can go over and play with Laura over here. So they just know how to put people together mm. for, the, for the betterment of the whole team, for the support of the whole team. If I'm understanding correctly, the Leos, um, they, they like to create a team, but they also want to be on top. And they're, and really, they're running it. Yeah. And they're running it. So it's not really leadership, right? So they have a lot to learn from the 11 energy because the 11 really is the subtle gentle, persuasive type of leader. And remember we said they are a fixed fire sign. So right. this fixed in opinion, fixed in mindset, fixed in. So, so review that for me for one second. So we've got the, the Leo that's a fixed fire sign. And, and Aries is the cardinal. And how does that differ? How are the two differ? Because cardinal sign, so, you know, we'll just run around here. So Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, 
are cardinal signs. So they're the, they're the leaders. They are the people who, who do the do as I say in sort of the corporate world. Right. Then we've got the fixed signs, which is Taurus and Leo and Scorpio and Aquarius. Okay. And they are fixed in mindset. They are solid. They are fixed. They are sometimes too fixed, right? There's, there's, mm -hmm. there. Then we've got the mutable. And so the mutable are kind of a bit more the followers. Now they can lead, but they have a tendency to lead the whole group from mm -hmm. back here. Right. So that's the 11. And that is the mutable fire sign of Sag. Okay, so we're gonna go there in a second. One more question about the Aries before we flip into Sag. Oh yeah, we um, gotta go back to the I am, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> it's the only time I get to tease Anne. Yeah, this is not about me, this is an observation. This is, believe it or not, for once it's not about me. Okay, and yeah. Let's <laughs> work with me here. <laughs> well, we got, um, yeah, so. <laughs> But I had read um, that an interesting concept, which is probably so, you know, you, you, I know you know this, but Aries being the first sign, we don't have any model to follow. So there's really no sort of um, evolutionary history. Is, is the concept I think I was reading was that if you were, for example, what comes after Aries? Pisces? Taurus. Taurus. Taurus does? Okay, so. Pisces Taurus. comes before yeah. Aries. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and then we start with Aries and go around again. So Pisces has had the opportunity to learn the advantage of preceding signs, whereas Aries doesn't because they were the first sign. So I find that kind of interesting. You don't, you not agree? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it, I know where you're going. I know where you're going with this and I've read this, but this doesn't make any sense to me because what we're then saying is that Aries hasn't had any other past lifetimes. So that does not make any sense. I wasn't looking at it from past lifetime so much. I don't know where this was coming from, but I just thought it was an interesting concept be being that the 11s bring forth way more uh, previous lifetime history. Yeah. Got a lot more energy and whatnot in their DNA. So, so if they choose to come forward as an Aries, they are choosing to bring forward all that information that they've gathered through every other lifetime and perhaps on other planets and so on and to come and bring that forward and be a leader with that. Right, right, exactly. And the Leos have chosen to come forward from all these other lifetimes, bring forward so much of that creative side to them, which really steps into the 11, the double creativity, but to do something with that in this lifetime. Right. Even if they work in the corporate world, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wouldn't be putting them in the accounting department, right? Because unless you're going to do a creative accounting yeah um but i would put the more again we come into that you know choosing how to i'd certainly put them in the um um hr department mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay uh let's move forward and let's start taking a look at the sagittarians tell so, me something about the sages well the sages are considered the mutable fire sign so they really don't want to be pushed out there in the very front. They mm -hmm. still can run the show, but they are going to run with everybody pulled in. So mutable is about the mutability, right? Oh. So they are, they, they often can be the chameleon. So it almost sounds like out of the three, the Sagittarian is probably going to be the most balanced with the 11 energy. Would you agree? Uh, they are the people pleasers. Yes, well, 11s are too. Yeah, definitely. They are the people pleasers, and they're going to want to make sure that Johnny and Alice and Susan and Tom, Dick, and Harry are all happy with all of the decisions that are being made here. Mm -hmm. Not about the judgment. It's about making sure that everybody's going to be happy. Right. Sagittarius are very interesting group. Sagittarius are the in the head and out the mouth and sometimes not a whole lot of thought put behind it. So they can be the spew out of what they really uh, think, but they are the truth seekers. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that in all Sagittarius, there is a very innate um, spiritual 
religious often side to them. They often come from many past lifetimes who's come through very religious uh, mm -hmm. past lifetimes. But I think where the 11 struggle with, struggle with the Sagittarius is often can be what is truth. Mm -hmm. You know, they've come to be light workers uh, without a doubt, but if I channel down Sally from the other side, how can I be sure that that's Sally I'm channeling down? Mm -hmm. Or if they go to visit a medium and the medium says, you know, I'm going to bring forward mom or whoever, they will always question, mm -hmm. was that true? Yeah. So they are very doubters of truth. They're always seekers of truth. Mm -hmm. What is truth? Mm -hmm. Are they more, uh, do they tend to be a bit more adaptable, a little bit more flexible than the other two signs? Yes, because they're mutable. So right. mutable is that chameleon. They can, they can change and be lots of times, right. whatever you need them to be. Mm -hmm. And they are the sign that really... <laughs> Bear with me for one moment. Houston, we have a problem. Hi. Not sure what happened there. I'm not sure if the video is continuing. It is still says it's still recording. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Mercury. That was that was fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> said nobody ever. As, but uh, so uh, with regards to the Sages, they need freedom and they need to give themselves permission to be free. They need to give themselves permission to not necessarily have to be attached to somebody's hip. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, in the world of medical astrology, Sagittarius have to watch their hips and their sciatica. That is huge. Their, their nervous system when not taken care of, can really be uh, something that can give a little bit of a problem for Sagis. And they're sometimes difficult to read. Um, is that because of the mutability of the sign? Yes, yes, it is. Because what they're trying to do is figure out what you want them to be. Right, right. And can right. they be yes. who you want them to be? Who right. they assume you want them to be. Right. Right, so they then, like the 11s then, uh, they need partnership? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They, they like partnership, but they don't want someone who's going to be there that attaches to their hip. Mm -hmm. Right. They, and they're often, you know, I, I often suggest with Sages, they can be world travelers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sagis is in, in the astrology, it's usually in the ninth house of long distance traveling. They usually have a real big question about spirituality um, and the truth about all things and so on. Now we're going to see Jupiter, our planet of expansion, next year. So the year of 2019, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Sagittarius. And it's going to push, without a doubt, it will push all 11s. It'll push all signs, but it will push all 11s into really exploring their spirituality side. Yeah. And stepping into their authentic selves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And figuring out who, who they are. So mm -hmm. the Sagittarius now, um, they have a, they, as you said, they have a need to, to connect. Um, something I've observed with Sag is, is that they have a need to, or not, not a need necessarily, but they seem to light up when they connect with somebody who um, has a good education. Maybe they're very successful. Uh, if they can they're connect. They're impressed by success. Right. So that it's, and, and what about men with women, women with men? Are they um, influenced either way? You know, it, like, for example, would a man be um, more drawn to a woman who was, you know, very, very successful? Would a woman be drawn to a man that was way more successful? Like, is that, uh, is that a common thing with Sagittarians? Well, I guess, as we said, Sag just don't want to be the, front, the person out on the front of the pack, right? Right. The, the mutability. So they would be more attracted to successful uh, women. 
right. or the other way around. Uh, because Sages don't like to be the decision maker. Right. They will put that off on their partner. Mm -hmm. Mutability signs will have a tendency to go along with things a mm -hmm. lot more than yeah. otherwise. Right. right. But they want you to make mm -hmm. the decision. Whereas the Aries fire wants to be the person making that decision. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. So that's the difference between the cardinal and the mutable signs. Now, what is, are they? Are they like the Aries? Are they head cases? Because I, I understand they're quite good storytellers, aren't they? They've got oh, yeah. you know, good imagination. They can kind of string it together and elaborate well, the on the thing story. Is, though, they catch a fish like this, but they oh, catch the story and the fish is like this, right? Yeah. My mom is a Sag, is and uh, yeah. so it's it's very interesting. They they also keep their youth. That's mm -hmm. the other thing that happened. They are some of the longest lived mm -hmm. astrological signs. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. But they hold on to anger, man. When they have anger, they do not let it go. Yeah. Um, until again, astrologically within the chart, Pluto has come through. Now, this was a number of years ago, but Pluto mm -hmm. came through and uh, really created some shifts and changes. I mean, that was, you know, 20 some odd years ago, but it created some shifts and changes, mm -hmm. right? And so when does um, Jupiter Go, is it, they're going, it's going direct next year? It's going, right now, Jupiter is stalled okay. for the whole world, but it's stalled in the sign of Scorpio, so we'll get there when we get to the water signs. Right. Uh, but it will leave the sign of Scorpio late this year, and so the next sign on the yeah. zodiac level is uh, Sag. Okay. And so that will then go into Sag, the sign of Sag, and we will find 2019 will 2019 and 2020 will be the year for the Sages. Interesting. And so 2019 will be a universal year of three, which is all about self-expression. Yes. Right? And being able to speak your truth and allow yourself to feel confident to, to step into that. Mm -hmm. so that'll be interesting to see how many people really feel the courage to get going, right? Yes. Yes. Jump yes. in the bit and finally do it. Kind of but thing. it also means that right now we've, and you see the last two years, so the year of 2016 and the year of 2017, the sign of Sagittarius has been going through the sign of, um, I mean, the uh, Saturn has been going through the sign of Sagittarius. That has put so much pressure on the Sages over these last two years. It's really been a bit sad, you know, because mm -hmm. Saturn is the sense of responsibility. So Sages like to be free, and, and if they want to go, they, they can go. Uh, but over this last two years, not so much. Right. Because Saturn, that sense of responsibility, has put so much pressure on the Sages. And so that's, it's likely affecting the sense of response to the people who are still working. So it's a sense of responsibility right. to the workplace, making something of themselves, once again, not allowing themselves to play, yep. not allowing themselves to um, reach. And falling under the pressure. pressure. Yeah. And also with regards to their families. Yes, you may find that with the Sages, what may have happened is maybe you have children that have broken up in a marriage, and now you have right. your daughter back home with her three kids. And yeah. Domestic drama. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And fire signs, you know, even though Leo is all about drama, but fire signs themselves are all about the drama. It often is life according to the fire sign, you know? Mm hmm and that can be difficult, all this, and it's, it's true. I mean, I lived with a Sagittarian for a lot of years, and um, it's true that they tend to kind of thrive on the drama. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's like, it's, it's interesting to talk about. It's interesting to dissect. It's interesting, you know, just keep bringing it to the table, bringing it to the table. And, of course, anything we give our energy, attention, and focus to gets there, right? And the one thing that the 11 doesn't want is the drama, right? But I think what happens there is the, um, the Sagittarius don't focus on their own drama. They focus oh, no. on everybody else's. Yes, that, yeah, absolutely. And that becomes their drama. Yes, yes, exactly. 
Um, but thinking of it in relation to the 11s and how can we help the 11s, I think if you, you know, if you're a Sagittarian, maybe you might want to consider how much time and energy are you putting into focusing on this drama? How's that working for you? You know, and really what, what's in it for you? Why? But I also would think the Sag 11s as a young age yeah. would, and I'm, I'm going to even kick into about the ages of seven, eight, nine, may have had a big interest in things like angels or even elves and fairies and mm -hmm. you know, something along the spirituality world. Right. And then I suspect when they got to maybe their teenage years, maybe about 13, 14, because I'm thinking astrologically what's mm -hmm. going on in a chart there. Yep. Um, they then poo-pooed it and said, that's not truth. Mm -hmm. That is not truth. Right. And now as they're older, and again, we come back to that 38 to 42 age or that 50 age. Now it may be reawakening again. And I will tell you in 2019 and 2020, it will massively awake. Wow. Wow. Something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, so to help our Sages, yeah. um, I really do suggest pick up a box of angel cards. Yeah. Go to chapters or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I often, I, my very first angel deck of angel cards was by Doreen Virtue called mm -hmm. Messages from the Angels. Mine too. Was it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, you know, use that. Pull a card every day because that Sagittarius side to you has a huge inner spiritual side. Mm hmm one of the, the decks that I always recommend is this one here. This is the soul's journey. Oh, that's okay. Do you have these ones? No, I've never seen them as a matter of fact. They're so good. This is by James von Prague. And yes. um, if you're trying to find, I, I will often intuitively pull one of these cards before I meet with a client just to find out, you know, what exactly I do the same thing. Yep. Yeah. What, what are we trying to facilitate here? You know, what, what is it that I can really help this person with? And it's amazing uh, what comes from them. And for anybody who's not familiar with, how angel cards work, um, as some of, them, some of them, some people might not be. This is an example of one of them. This is, uh, they're all Mandela's in this particular card. So this is about blame. So maybe you're blaming yourself for something. This one could be about um, envy, right? Each card has a different uh, image on it. And then there's a little booklet that you can go to that tells you the, the message. Um, but I think Holly's absolutely right. Everybody needs a deck. Or yes, and whatever works for you. Do you have your <laughs> messages from your angels right there and within? Uh, no, I don't. I okay. Don't. This is the one I, t I tend to, I, and there's two actually that I, I resort to. That one, um, Messengers from, uh, no, it's the Omens. These ones, fe Feathered Omens. These ones are amazing. Oh, yes. For yes. anybody who wants to connect to the wisdom of, the, of wildlife and the birds, oh my gosh, these are awesome. This is by Ted Andrews. He's long since uh, passed away, but his work lives on. They're really, really good. So whatever speaks to you, though. And the thing is, you can get all kinds of different angel decks. Quite often, it's not the angels that I feel like I want to talk to. You know, sometimes it's, it's wildlife. Sometimes it's exactly. birds. I'm very yeah. motivated by birds and their messages. Yeah. Right? And sometimes yeah. it's just hard-ass lessons, you know, that come from the lesson cards. Yep, I agree. Either way, it's, it is an angelic message coming through. Um, it's divine guidance in whatever form it, it wants to, uh, to show up in, right? Yeah. So. But, you know, the other thing is with, we were talking about the Sages and their spirituality and what is truth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you really, um, sometimes Sages want hard evidence mm -hmm. of that truth. Yeah. And I get it. I, you know, there's probably nobody any greater of a doubter uh, than myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to let it be. Right. right. And is it all about you? Yes. You know, and, the, and, it, and is it not? You know, that's... that's the cool. universe is just in awe. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes Sages or all of the fire signs... Um, you know, don't ask for help. Whoever you want to ask help from, doesn't matter. You yeah. know, God, universe, angels, spirit guides, feathered friends, uh, whoever you want to ask. But I will tell you, they will not cross over that boundary line if you do not ask. 
Mm -hmm. And Sagas are going to be the exact people, and maybe an 11, I don't know, but Sagas are going to be the exact people that's going to say, well, why didn't the angels help me with that? Right. Well, the question has to be, did you ask? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's, and, and you bring up a good point, because I think 11s, um, they try so hard to, to make everything work on their own. You know, they try to be very independent. Well, that's that double one, right? They're looking for their independence. They're looking for their autonomy. They're looking for it. But, but they really, they came in with such an amazing spiritual connection. But in the early years when they found out that they were, and I'm trying to abolish the word different, because I really feel that different imposes that you are over here and I'm over there, but that's not the case. We're all unique, right? So That's right. We all are. There are no two people alike in the world. Exactly. So the, the word different doesn't even apply here. But they recognize that they, they don't necessarily fit into the mold that everybody would want them to fit into. So sometimes it's easier for them to conform and to make their way into um, the image that the people that they're with want them to be. So they sacrifice what they're here for, and in so doing, they paralyze their ability to connect to the other side. They, they have a hard time connecting to spirit sometimes. Um, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's a question of, how do I turn that off, right? It's, it's just like it's just such a huge connection. So they really struggle with that, and making the, making the connections – and being able to become who they want to become, who they authentically want to become. Like, you know, I want to say that, that I only stepped into my authenticity probably four years ago, um, where I could actually say, hey, this is it kind of thing, and I've never been happier. But prior to that, I know what it is to struggle to try and figure out who you are and what you're supposed to do without having this need to conform to what everybody else thinks you should be. And I right. think that's something that um, 11s really struggle with, um, and I, I feel that what you're saying about the Sagittarians is that is, is exactly that they're trying to um, morph and change and adapt to whatever it is they think you want them to be. And that is the assumption that yes, they absolutely. Think yeah, yeah. Want them to be. And I will tell you, uh, the book that I recommend quite often is this book by Wayne Dyer. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Called excuses yeah. be gone. You could have written that. <laughs> I could have. I could have. I, I so could have. Uh, but I didn't. And I'm glad yeah. he did. Because, yeah. you know, in there, when we challenge ourselves, one of his greatest uh, laws, we tell lies to ourselves all the time. Absolutely. You know, and we say, just say, I'm not smart enough to do that. Say we say that. Wayne Dyer says, stop right there. Stop there. Mm -hmm. and ask, how do you know that? See, I would stop that and I would say, I am choosing to feel not good enough, or I am choosing to right, see how that works for you. And then move back and go, yeah. well, how do you know that? And you go, yeah. well, I tried that test five years ago and I failed. Ah, mm -hmm. but are you the same person that you were five years ago? Right. No. What else you got? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and work your way through it. But it is... An amazing book, Excuses Be Gone, yeah. by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. I think that was one of his last ones. It was, yeah. yes. Yeah. And you know, the other one that might be good, too, to mention, um, and you can get it on YouTube, just watch on YouTube, is, is his movie, the last movie he made, The Shift. Yes. Oh, what an amazing movie. I and mean, you got to watch it a couple times just to get it. Uh, but it really was an amazing film. It was so organic and just such a, just an incredibly good film. But anybody who's sort of struggling with, you know, becoming who they, who they need to be and kicking those obstacles to the curb, that sort of thing, it's an amazing, amazing piece of work. So. But that's why I brought up the excuses be gone for the Sagittarius because again, they struggle with truth. Yeah. Most of what hides the truth right. is their self-told excuses. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, this has been fun, and it this has been, been. amazing. I learned a lot today. I'm sure our, our viewers did, too. Excellent. Um, it's always fun to get together. Yeah, it is always fun. You never know what's going to come out of our mouths. <laughs> Good or bad. Yeah, exactly. So, um, anyway, our next uh, discussion is going to be on the – are we doing – Air. We're doing air. We're doing air. This one's going to be published tomorrow, which will be April the 
4th. If I'm really organized, I might get it up today, but typically it'll be April 4th, so that's a Wednesday. And so the following Wednesday, um, the uh, presentation that we'll be putting together for you will be published on Wednesday the 11th. Um, so I'm hoping that you'll take a time to, to join us for that one. I hope that you'll take the opportunity to share this with anybody that you know is a master number 11 um, who has a fire sign. And you know what? This is great information for anybody who's a fire sign. So regardless of whether you're an 11 or not, I think it's really valuable information that, that Holly has shared with us. So Holly, how do you get people get in touch with you? People can get in touch with me. I have a Facebook page just called Holly Pool Astrology. I write in it every day about the planetary alignment, yeah. as to what's going on up there in the sky and how that's affecting us on Earth. Mm -hmm. And also through my website. Uh, you can email me at holly at hollypool.com. Perfect. And so you offer personal readings? I do offer personal readings. Okay. I have a life coaching program called Seasons of Your Life, which you can check out just on my website, www.hollypool.com. Um, but as I said, check into the Facebook page. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Make sure that you follow Holly on Facebook because she's got a really dynamic page. She writes all the time on what's going on, what's affecting all of us. So I find it really, really amazing. So be sure to share it with your friends because I'm sure they'll enjoy it too. But thank you so much, Holly. I really, really appreciate you stepping by and, and uh, facilitating this, this video with me. I am Ann Perry Numerologist. I am www.annperrynumerologist.com. You can also follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on YouTube. Obviously, I have a channel quite active there. I'd love it if you would subscribe. So we look forward to seeing you again next week on Wednesday, April the 11th of 2018. Uh, and I'm hoping everybody's going to have a great day. Take care have for now. Wonderful day. Thanks, Holly. Bye-bye. Bye for now.